And today I'm answering one of your questions. We were live yesterday talking about advice for pre-meds to stand on activities. And one of you guys commented and Ty has commented. So when you guys comment, I will get back to you. I will answer questions. It's a good way to get advice. So make sure you guys are active on this channel. You guys are commenting, asking questions, because I'm here to engage with you guys while we do it live. But Mtai has asked the question after we got off live and was asking, what advice do you have for medical students who want to get into a top residency program in a competitive residency specialty? And so that's what we're going to be talking about today. Um, as always, guys, like I said, I'm Dr. Pines. I'm The Study Doc. My website is thestudydoc.com. I'm not just a social media person. I'm way more than that in that I provide courses and coaching to help you guys be successful. And actually, in Taya's, one of my success stories was a student who was a low GPA student, had to repair his GPA, had to build his prerequisites. And we met several times. We fixed things, built things. He got straight A's after my study course in his post back program, did what we need to do, got into medical school, and is now living the dream. So now he's trying to figure out how to go to that next step, right? We're always thinking one step ahead. Night shock. It's been a while. What up? Uh, so when it comes to being successful as a medical student and getting into residency, it's entirely different, but entirely the same as being a pre-med in the sense that the universal key to success, the universal thing, if you want to advance well in that next step, like have opportunities in medical school, have opportunities in residency is that you have to be excellent. So if you can look yourself in the mirror and say, man, I'm not being excellent then you got to make change. If you can look yourself in the mirror and say, oh, you know what? I am excellent. I have been doing the right things. I have been standing out. I have been making an impact. I have been doing things that are significant. Then you're going to be okay for medical school admissions. And the same thing for residency. The one big difference in change as we go from medical school admissions is that medical school admissions is very objective, meaning it's a lot about the raw numbers, which is why having a low GPA, having a, a bad MCAT score, not having these strong extracurriculars on paper is really going to hurt you in terms of medical school admissions because they're very by the numbers because this, the volume of applications is so big. Okay, When it comes to residency acceptance for medical students, it's a different ball game because while the numbers matter, what also matters, and sometimes actually even more so, is the subjective aspect of the application. And the way this plays out, and what I mean by that is it, it's how people think about you. So beyond the numbers, do they like you? And before people can like you, they have to know you. And so that is my key advice for medical students who want to get a competitive residency, is that you have to recognize that residency admissions is a large component, is subjective. So you have to be active and proactive as a medical student to network, to build the amount of people, not that you know, but that know you and beyond knowing you, know you well and like you a whole lot. Because those people can write you incredible letters of recommendation that have a huge influence on the admissions selection match process of residency. Beyond that, if they really like you, if they love you because you're so amazing, because you were so excellent, because they have such great rapport with you, they're actually going to go beyond writing a letter of recommendation. They're actually going to make calls and inquiries on your behalf to the residencies you want to say, no, listen, this is no bull. Listen to me right here, right now. I'm calling because Andre is the biz. You must accept him into your residency program. I don't care whatever else is going on. This is the guy you want. Get it done. And the power of that, guys, is that I actually had residency programs calling me, asking me to interview for their residency, asking me because they had heard from so-and-so that I was a top candidate. That's the power of the subjective part of medical school. So you guys have to make sure that you're building your network. And I teach a lot about networking in my Dominate Pre-Med course, right? In the upcoming, you guys know I'm coming out with my Dominate Med School course, but I talk a lot about the importance of networking and networking. People think of networking as like, oh, I'm going to send a bunch of emails out or I'm going to go to a conference and meet a bunch of people. And that's how you network. But the reality of networking is much like getting work done in the classroom or being involved in activity. It's not about a bunch of breath. It's about depth of relationships. So as you guys are talking about effective networking, the key to networking is not to know a whole bunch of people. It's to find a couple key figures who can advance your career and then ingratiating yourself to them, becoming close with them, having them become invested in your success, right? So that way they can know you, know you well, like you and so forth. And they actually want to promote your future. It's a huge mistake a lot of students make both in pre-med, both in medical school, is that they think, oh man, the more people I know, the better. They got like a thousand business cards. They go around collecting business cards. I don't collect business cards. I only take business cards from people who I actually want to connect with 
because I understand that it's not knowing a lot of people, it's how well they know you and how invested they are in your future. Do you guys understand what I'm saying right now? If you understand what I'm saying right now, I like the video. I see people commenting right now. I see Aaron, what up? Yes, you're welcome for this advice. Right, Armand, what up? Does that make sense to everybody? There's a big, big difference. You have to create buy-in. Think about the way your parents feel about you, how they forgive, they overlook all your shortcomings and still think the world of you. That's how you want your network to feel about you. It doesn't matter what your flaws are. All they see is greatness and success. And the, the practical example of this was in my process as a medical student. I have no interest in research. I am a terrible researcher. I'll admit it every single day, every which way. I said it on my, even my resident interviews, I said, listen, I'm not a great researcher. But I had mentors who spoke of me highly in a research capacity for my commitment, for my responsible nature, for my ability to communicate, to contribute, to lubricate, to be a great teammate in the lab. And because they spoke so highly of me in that facet, they knew I wasn't a researcher. But they were willing to put their neck out to say, man, listen, even though he was here for research and he, he has no interest in research and he's not good at it, he contributed in a positive way. And those letters, like my best letter was from my research PI, and I did terrible in my research. I had no publications at the time in his lab, but he wrote this glowing letter of recommendation for me because I showed up every day, I went above and beyond, I was proactive in establishing that rapport and letting him know that, listen, I don't know anything about research, I have no interest in this, but I'm going to do my best to contribute in meaningful ways and support the rest of the team. And because I did that and I added something, he had great glowing positive things to say about me, guys. And so what's that relationship forming in that I didn't know everybody, but I knew the key players who could advance me. I knew my PI very well. Go get drinks, hang out, that kind of thing. I knew the chair of my department. I knew the residency program director at my department. I reached out and connected on a deep level with the residency program directors at the residencies I'm interested in, particularly UCSD, right, where I ultimately ended up matching, is that that program director, right, knew me like we were like this. This guy could recite like my favorite meal. Like, this guy knew me like that because I was proactive in forming and forging that network. So for you guys as medical students, we have to understand with you proactive, build that network, build it deep, right? Strong relationships, not a bunch of shallow relationships. And one of the key ways that we can do that, guys, there's two. I'll give you guys two and then we'll get out of here. All right, everybody with me? Like this video. If you're getting this advice right now, if you are hearing me, I don't see enough lighting up this box right now. All right, I'm seeing some comments now. Better light this box up, y'all. I'm here, I'm supposed to be in here taking care of patients, and I'm out here outside working with y'all. So let's go. So two things, real quick. The first thing is, is that you guys need to take advantage of your home department. There are too many students who have even a trivial interest, right? A student, like, I'm not sure if I want to do this. As soon as you even have an inkling that you might want to do something, you should be reaching out to that department to start setting up informational meetings. You should start going to every single event that your home department has. Every single one. Yeah, I don't care what it is. If it's tea and crumpets, you're going because it's going to allow them to see your face, see your face, see your face, see your face. So then when it comes time to apply to residency, you're already in there and the pressure's off because worst comes to worst, you can stay at your home program. And I have a student this year who's applying into anesthesia. I convinced her to come over from emergency medicine. She's applying anesthesia, but I said, listen, even if you have just a, a possible interest, first year she was making inroads with the anesthesia department. So even though her primary focus is emergency medicine, there was a possibility she went with anesthesia. So that first year, she was doing e-med and anesthesia events all the time, all the time, all the time, all the time. So now, fast forward, she's applying to residency. And I'm like, hey, we were building those relationships. How are they going? She's like, oh, my program director already told me that if I want to stay here, I can. I can match here. So now she's already in the know. Like, it's totally pressure off when it comes to residency applications because she likes her university and she could stay there if she wants to. And that's what you guys want to build, okay? And there's a second key thing that you can do that are often overlooked by students and inadequately utilized and poorly utilized. And we're going to talk about that. I'll go live later today, and we'll talk about this afternoon. The second biggest thing you can do as a medical student to secure a residency, y'all. Did you guys have a good time? I got to go. I'm getting texted right now that I got to go back in the clinic here. So everybody, have a great day. I'm Dr. Pinesett. I am the study doc. My website is thestudydoc.com. It goes well beyond this. Courses, coaches, in-depth, high level, right? All the details you need to be successful, to be efficient, to be a great student, a great pre-med, and live your dreams. 
Okay, so I'm being called in right now. <laughs> so yes, the cliffhanger, Spencer. Yes. So come back, join me this afternoon. Maybe we'll do like three or four o'clock, somewhere in that range. Uh, we'll come out my afternoon break. I'll come out. We'll do another talk, guys, and we'll continue this talk in residency. Make sure you guys, if you're on here, like this video. This is your first time with me. Make sure you subscribe. Turn on live notifications. It's that little bell, so that way you can get hit up every time I'm live. You're on here. You're on here, like Rosanna, like Dujan. You're always on here, live action with me. So. Thank you guys for joining me. I'll catch you guys later. How do we always end? No excuses. Just dominate because we will dominate. We have to dominate. We can dominate. But are we going to get it done? Let's go.